Hello, photographers, videographers, designers, and other visual freelance creatives, and welcome. This is your place. This is Coaching for Creatives. I'm Aura McKay. I am a business coach and the founder of Business of Creativity. I have been doing these live broadcasts for more than uh, four years. I think it's been five years. And today was especially challenging for me to find a topic. So I chose, are you getting bored of your own marketing? Are you feeling uninspired? Do you feel like you've been saying the same things over and over again? How are you currently feeling about your marketing? Welcome and thank you for joining me for Coaching for Creatives. If you are here live, say hello. Let me know how you're feeling about your marketing right now in the comments. I wanted to share about this because I've been in business for more than two decades, almost two and a half decades. I started in the late 1900s. One of the things that is coming up for me, especially as I'm rounding the corner on my 200th and something episode of Coaching for Creatives, is I'm getting bored. I'm starting to hear myself say the same things over and over again. It's starting to feel like, ugh, what am I, I don't have anything new to say. Some of you may be having that experience with your website. I know that when I was building my own photography website, by the time my website was published and it was out there and it was in front of people, I was so tired of the images and the copy and everything else. I'd been working with it for months and it just felt like stale and outdated. What I need to remember and what you need to remember is that very likely people are not seeing your stuff as often as you think. For sure, they're not seeing it as often as you're seeing it. Being freelancers and solopreneurs, that means that we're a lot of the times we're doing everything ourselves. We're seeing every single post, every single caption, every single graphic, every single email that's going out there. Our eyeballs are on it and we're looking at it with intention and we're looking at the message and we're reading all the way through it. I guarantee you people are not reading 100% of your copy. They're not watching to the end of the videos and they are for sure not seeing every single thing you post. So what does that mean? It means that you're likely way more bored of your content than any of your audiences. It means that you can probably reuse some of your old content if it is still relevant and important. The chances of someone seeing something on social media that you posted six months ago is pretty low. You're going to be getting new followers. A lot of times when you get new people following, all they see is your new content. The same thing for your email marketing. You might have, you might think, oh my gosh, I've, I've sent the same emails and I've sent the same emails and I've got nothing new to say. Go way back in your archives and look at maybe there's a topic that was popular, but you have something more to say on that. For me today, it was a struggle, folks. I, I don't know what else to tell y'all. Although when I look at my own YouTube channel and I look at my different playlists, I can see that some topics have more views than other topics. My most popular video by far was and is still, is it ever okay to work for free? I'm going to look at maybe answering that question again, even though it's my most popular topic, even though a couple of hundred people have already seen and watched that video and have probably even read the blog, there are thousands of people that have not seen it. My advice to you is yes, it's always important to look at our graphic design and our message and what we're doing to see is it relevant. For the most part, a <clears throat> visual identity can stay relevant for anywhere between one to five years. If your brand or your logo is more than five years old, and mine is, I am five and a half years in business then it's time to review. This year, I took a leap and I reached out to a graphic designer in my community who I love. Thank you, Kirsty. She offered to review some of my visual identity branding elements and to look at 
how could we update them? How could we make them a little bit more relevant? Not just because I'm getting bored of eating my own cooking, but because it's been long enough that it actually might be time to update how I present my brand or update my website. One of the things with my content-based marketing tools is that's where I have my biggest struggle is because I, I don't want to be too repetitive. I believe that each thing in and of itself is valuable and interesting. And yet I know that there are a lot of people who haven't heard episode number one of season three. What am I going to do? I'm going to take a deep breath and know that I am not my client. You are not your audience. Your audience has not heard every single thing that you have shared. It's important to give people a chance to hear your message. Get out of your own way of feeling like, oh, I don't want to put it out there. The other thing you want to remember is in today's day and age, People need multiple chances to hear that same message before they're going to take any action. It used to be that you needed nine exposures to a message before you had someone who would take action on it. It used to be you needed three times of being in front of someone to create awareness, three more times for them to have an attitude or opinion about you, and then three more times for them to take action. We're so inundated by information. There's the quick scroll where we're only getting a second or a, two, a couple of seconds to be able to absorb a message. Nowadays, they're saying 16 touch points before someone will take action. That means that you can put that message out there multiple times. People need to hear it multiple times. I remember once upon a time, I was inviting people to come to some event and it was something that I was really excited about it. I knew that my immediate circle was super excited about it. I posted it on my Facebook. I posted it on Instagram. I sent an email. I sent a second email. I posted it again on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn. I think that was it. Not very much. And I had several people tell me that they missed the event because they actually have come to expect hearing the same message more often. I think that there's a piece of the marketplace that has been trained to expect to hear something over and over again. If you're only inviting people once or twice, then maybe you're doing the disservice. To be fair, I also reached out to get some feedback on what can I do to make my content more vital and relevant and lively. I reached out to Jennifer Kolbuck of uh, Mountaintop Consulting and Social with Jen, who is a fabulous person to reach out to, by the way. One of the reasons I did it was because while I know that I can repeat my message, what was happening was that I was feeling like I wasn't really saying it in a way that people could connect with. She gave me a whole different perspective. It's not just rinse and repeat over and over again. It's try to say the same thing with a different spin. Maybe the last time you said it, you did it as a regular post. Maybe this time you do a poll. Maybe the last time you shared it, it was more about information. And this time you share the same idea, but you share it as a story. Maybe last time you shared it as an FAQ, and this time you're gonna share it as a celebration. Finding different styles of saying the same thing is what can really lead us to having a richer relationship with our marketing and not feel so burnt out and bored by our own messaging. I am not the same listener that I was when I first heard the message. There's something that I heard in the industry of coaching that I believe really applies for you as freelancers. And that is that, of course, there's going to be other photographers out there, other designers out there, um, lots of people marketing and trying to get the attention of maybe your ideal client. There's three different pieces that your ideal client is responding to. One of them is that message, honing that marketing message, putting your own spin on it, finding a way to make that marketing message clear, getting that marketing message in front of people consistently and with repetition. Brilliant. The other piece is the messenger. 
the way that you share and talk about photography or design is going to be very different than other photographers and designers share and talk about photography and design. You as the messenger, your communication style, your portfolio, the, uh, the process that you bring, who you are as a freelancer is the message. And that's going to be a part of what your audience would respond to. The third piece, so we have the message, the messenger, and then the moment. There's a statistic that says that at any given time, only 5% of your audience might even potentially be ready to buy. That other 95% that's seeing your message, they're not interested. It's not relevant to them. But something could happen in the next day or two weeks where all of a sudden, if they were to hear that message, it all of a sudden is relevant to them. Part of marketing is to be there when people are looking for us, to be this, the this first solution they find when they go and look for a solution to their problem. In social media, that certainly means staying current and doing repeating um, your key messages in interesting and clever and creative ways. Marketing is something that we're doing long before anybody ever gets to see what we share out in the world. And we need to repeat our marketing over and over again so that we give people a chance to connect, to resonate, and to have it land at the right moment for them. Sometimes that can mean that we get bored or we get disinterested. What is the solution? How do we get out of our boredom? Well, you do what I did. You reach out to somebody else, you get external feedback on it. You do your own audit of your marketing and you look to see, is it contemporary? Is it modern? Is it fresh? Is it going to connect to your audience in today's conversations? I'd love to hear from you. What is working in your marketing? What are you bored with? What do you do to liven things up or freshen things up when your marketing starts to feel a bit stale for you? Thanks for participating by putting your comments in the comments thread, and we'll see you here next week on Coaching for Creative.